Well, can I too acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present. The last time I was here, before the last election, somebody charged the sage with a bucket of bleach. On a regular occasion, there is sit-ins in, in my office where the police are required and just last week, my uh, boards were defaced. I say that because, as was said at the onset, we can disagree on particular issues, but it's the constructive and respectful nature which is important as to how we conduct ourselves. And Carolyn and Lighter Footprints have always had an opening into my office and I've enjoyed the interactions with them and that is why I'm here today. Can I start by saying climate change is real, we need to be guided by the scientists and we need to be part of a global solution. And that's why the coalition government signed and ratified the Paris Agreement, joining 195 countries that are signatories and 185 uh, countries that ratified. We adopted a 26 to 28 per cent reduction target by 2030 on 2005 levels. And we're on track to beat that just as we have beaten our previous targets, namely the first Kyoto target and the 2020 target. For when we came to government, we were going to miss that target by around 755 million tonnes, and now we're on track to beat the 2020 target by 367 million tonnes. And what we are doing is putting in place a number of policies and strategies that is reducing our carbon footprint in a way that maintains the affordability and the reliability of our energy system, as well as reducing our overall emissions. In particular, the Emissions Reduction Fund has contracted for about 192 million tonnes of abatement at an average cost of about $12 a tonne, which is a very competitive price. We've also overseen the largest investment in renewables in Australia's history. In the last year, about 15 gigawatts of renewables has come in, worth about $20 billion. In terms of household solar, now 2 million homes have household solar, putting us as the highest on a per capita basis of anywhere in the world. The Clean Energy Finance Corporation, ARENA and others have made hundreds of investments worth billions of dollars, issued billions of dollars of loans and encouraged new and the commercialisation of new technology like microgrids and peer-to-peer -peer lending and other developments in batteries and the like. We've also put in place a National Energy Productivity Plan which aims to reduce our efficiency uh, in our energy sector and the built environment by 40% by 2030. And we've helped lead the international action on the phasing out of HFCs ahead of the Mon Montreal Protocol and by about 85% by 2036. Australia initiated and established the Asia-Pacific Rainforest Summit given 10% of the world's emissions are created by deforestation and working with other countries. We've also put in place the Blue Carbon Initiative, which is designed to protect our mangroves and our swamps because they're such an important carbon sink. And so there's a whole range of policies and initiatives, both domestically and internationally, which has brought us to where we are. And going forward, and I appreciate what Oliver said about uh, putting out the Climate Solutions Package because it is important for people to understand that $3.5 billion is being deployed to reduce emissions, including with an extension of the Emissions Reduction Fund, where more than 100 million tonnes will come from abatement that way, that we're putting $1.4 billion in this budget in, the snow, in Snowy 2.0. And Snowy 2.0 will be a big battery for the east coast of Australia because when more wind and solar comes into the system, intermittent sources of power, you need storage and backup. And you can't do that with just household batteries. You need something very substantial, and this will provide 2,000 megawatts of new generation capacity and more than 350,000 megawatt hours of storage. This is a nation-building exercise, and this is very substantial. There's a whole host of other policies that we are rolling out, including uh, support and grants for the uh, solar panels on community, for community groups uh, and for small businesses, and as well as putting new uh, plans in place and new standards for white goods and appliances. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
Our emissions have come down by 11.5% from 2005 levels. We have met our first Kyoto target. We're on track to easily beat our 2020 target. We have to be part of a global solution, but we also have to bear in mind that that needs to be done in the most cost-effective and managed way. That is something which I think Australia has failed at in the past, but is now doing so much better. Thank you very much.